once you've added an image into Google Slides, chances are that you will probably want to move it, resize it, or manipulate it in some way. So in this video, we're going to walk you through some different ways that you can change a single image that you've uploaded. And you can see here in this Google slide, it's totally blank except for one PNG file of the purple treble clef that I have added. So the, you'll notice the first thing I did was I clicked on this image and that selected it. So now I can change it and make do things to it. It also brought up something I want to point out, which is this little border around the outside. This is actually the border of my image, even though the, there's a clear part here, that clear part happens to be in the shape of a square. And these little blue squares kind of around that border are what we call the handles. Um, and with those handles, the first thing I can do is I can click and drag and resize that image. I can also click and drag anywhere that I see the little plus sign in my mouse and I can click and drag and that moves the image just a little bit. There's also one other little element to this handle, which is this little circle that sticks off here at the top. If I click on that and drag, I can rotate my image. Those are all things that I can do just right here from clicking and dragging once I have clicked on the image to select it. Now, if I really want to get fancy, you can see here I have this format options menu open, and this is where a lot of the other things you can do to images are going to show up. Now, how did I get to this menu? There's really two ways you can do it. One, I can go here to format options right there and just click on it. That's pretty straightforward. I can also go to format. Oops, I have to click on the image first, format, and then format options. And then there's just one other way, which is if I right click it, I can also get to this format options menu. So all the other things that we're going to look at in this video are a part of this format options menu. Here in the format options menu, you can see we have all these little headings and these arrows indicate there's a drop down kind of hidden up underneath it. And so any of these that I click on, it's going to give me some specific things that I can manipulate. So the first area we're going to look at is here at the top and it's size and rotation. Now, most of the time when I'm doing size and rotation things, I'm just doing them here by hand. But if you really want some granular control, you may want to choose to manipulate it here. Now, if you go ahead and do that route, you probably want to click this lock aspect ratio button because that's going to keep it a square. And you'll notice if I increase the size here, it's also increasing the size on the other side. If you go that route, you'll probably want to keep those selected and I can move it either just by its actual size or in a percentage. The area of this format options area that I use the most often is definitely this rotate area. If I want to get really granular about how much it's turned, um, I can use the arrows up and down to rotate it just by like a degree at a time. I can also rotate it 90 degrees or, and this is a really cool feature, I can flip it either horizontally or vertically. Now, obviously that makes my treble clef look a little weird, but there's a lot of times when I use that, especially with like Bitmojis, if I want the person to be waving a different way or something, I might flip it vertically or horizontally. So those are the things here in the size and rotation. You can also get to that in other ways if you right click, and we'll go into the right clicks more in a minute, but um, there's a rotate menu there that has those same rotate and flip options. And a lot of them are also available on the arrange menu. So there's about three different ways you can get to those flip and rotate options if you need to do that. Going back to our format menu then, if we close out size and rotation, the next thing is position. Again, I rarely use this area, though you might want to if you wanna just be specific about where it is located on the page. Um, I can either set those measurements away from the top left or from center. If you're wanting to be super specific about where something's located, you may wanna go that route. Um, it's also worth pointing out you can use the arrow keys to do something similar. So right now I'm not clicking my mouse anywhere. I'm using the arrow keys to shift my image up and down. All right, let's close that position and let's look at recolor. So this can be fun. It doesn't give you a lot of like specific ways you can control it. But if you just want like kind of a straight up color change, um, you can hit this recolor box and just see what it's kind of like a filter. See what those filter options are. And that can be a really quick and easy way to change up elements in your slideshow. All right, let's look here at adjustments. This is something you might be familiar with if you've done any editing of a photo, say on a photo app. So I can change the transparency of the image. I can also tweak the color a little bit. If I take the brightness, I can, you know, kind of change the tint of the color. Let's see if I can take it back to zero. There we go. And the same thing with contrast. That's not going to do anything on this image because there's just one color. Um, but that's another way that I can 
tweak the image that I've added. That's really going to come in handy if you're adding photos or more realistic pictures, um, things that are more complex. You may want to play with this adjustments area. Drop shadow. This is one of my favorite ways if I'm making like a, a room image and I want to make things look three-dimensional. Sticking a drop shadow on something is a great way to just give your image a little bit of pop. Um, I generally don't mess with the settings on the drop shadow, but if you click down here, you can tweak the color, the transparency, the angle. Those are things that are kind of worth playing with. Most of the time when I use it, I'm just checking the box and turning it on. And that's something I do use a lot, especially in like escape rooms or rooms that I'm creating on a slideshow. And then this reflection area, kind of same thing. It gives you just a reflection of your image and you can change what that looks like. So those are your format options. Like I said, a lot of it can be done just by clicking the handles here on the image, um, but you can get to them through this format options menu. You can also right click and get to that menu, the same thing there. And one other thing I'll point out that comes up when I click on this is there's a replace image option. So if you just wanted to swap out that image altogether, but sort of leave it in the same spot and with the same links or things that you had, you can go replace image and you basically have the same options as when you added the image in the first place. Okay, the last thing I wanna to talk to you about as far as editing a single image has to do with cropping that image. This is gonna be really important, especially if you are pulling images from the web or from let's say a stock photo gallery, oftentimes um, they may have parts of the image you don't want, whether that's transparent, like you can see here, I've got all this sort of extra transparent space in the shape, or if you're pulling in like a photo and you wanna crop it down um, just to a certain part, you're going to use this little symbol. And if I hover my image, my mouse over either this part of the image or the little arrow, you can see that it alternates between crop image and mask image. They both basically do the same thing and that it's gonna take this image and just shrink it down. Um, and But when you're looking at crop, it's gonna sort of be in just a square shape or whatever shape the image was before. When you're looking at mask, they sort of give you some different options. So let's start with cropping the image. If I click on the crop image option, I get a slightly different set of handles. I get these black ones and I can drag any of these handles in to crop the image. I just kind of want to crop it sort of extremely to show you what it does. So if I crop that and then I click out of it, you'll notice that it just chops off part of my image. I'm going to undo that so you can see the whole thing. Um, but I could, I could crop it down from sort of any direction and just it crops out part of that image. So if I was actually doing this, let's say for an escape room or something like that, I would probably crop it down to be kind of the exact whoops, size of the file. Now, you'll notice as I was sort of sliding that around, um, it slid the image over. And that's another thing you can do when you've got this crop option open. So you kind of have to be careful where your mouse is. So if I just undo both of those things, um, if my mouse is the double headed arrow, so like four little arrows, then that means I can drag my image into or out of the cropped shape as I want. If I want to just like drag one little side in, I need to look for my mouse being the single arrow. And then I can actually crop it down the way I want. So let's click out of that. Now you'll notice that the shape and the handles are much smaller and that means I basically successfully cropped it. Um, if I click on this little arrow to mask this image, that means that I can actually change this image so that it fits into a shape, which is kind of fun. Um, let me undo that and let's just look at those options one more time. So clicking on this is a crop, clicking on this is masking, and I can mask it into whatever shape I want. So um, of, of course, provided that it's one of the ones I have here. So let's say I want my treble clef. I don't know. Let's see what happens if I put it in a moon shape. Um, you know, it just makes it into a moon shape. So those are really your main options for cropping and or masking. So that covers all the things you can do with a single image on a Google slide. In the next video, we'll talk about how you can manipulate how images behave in relationship to other images that might be on the slide in terms of layering or ordering or their layout.